Hi team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan MSPs. This is just a free giveaway video of some of the bonkers interviews uh, that we have seen at the RNC, the Republican National Committee conference in Milwaukee recently. We've seen some pretty bizarre things, uh, such as, for example, people who appear to be part of a cult where the uh, the special underwear you have to wear to be part of that cult is indeed uh, an ear patch to signify that you are indeed supportive of Trump's. So I guess, yeah, that's something you can do. Uh, we're going to start on the interview front with Emily Maitlis. Emily Maitlis is a former BBC journalist who was... Uh, recognised in the recent film on Netflix, Scoop, which uh, concerns her very famous interview of Prince Andrew and his connections to Jeffrey Epstein. Now, here we have her no longer being at the BBC. She is part of the news agents uh, team, which is uh, like a podcast, vlog cast, basically a, a YouTube channel and whatnot uh, with John Sopel and... Um, is it Matthew Goodall? Anyway, a good, good team of uh, journalists who are covering world events. And she has been at the RNC herself. And this is her view on what's gone on. The conversations in this hall are utterly dystopian. If you ask them whether it matters that Donald Trump's a convicted criminal, they will tell you he isn't. They simply don't believe it. If you ask whether Hunter Biden is a convicted criminal, they'll say he didn't get long enough and his dad should be in prison too. There is literally total asymmetry on how the people here see the rule of law. I used to think that they were kind of turning it on, you know, putting it on, trying to spin this to the media. But I think something has actually happened. I think it has become more cultish. I genuinely think the people who are spouting this garbage are starting to believe what they're saying. And I should just say before we go, I, I mentioned the weirdos and the misfits. I mean, there is a really kind of distasteful thing going on, which is the RNC seems to be where sort of former celebrities come to reinvigorate their fallen celebrity status. Liz Ross? <laughs> Well, funny you mention Liz Truss, Boris Johnson, who spoke yesterday to an absolutely empty room. We couldn't believe the pictures. We were expecting it to fill up until we understood that was as full as the room was going to get. But the other person that I bumped into was Russell Brand, oh who was on a talk show called Patriot. And he had oh. with him a very young female assistant who was trying to keep us as far away from him as she could. And I was listening quite intensely to the interview. And the last question that the interviewer asked was, so, Russell, there are a lot of young men listening to you here. And I thought, oh, he's going to go for it. Here's the ball. The co context here is that Russell Brand was this uh, eventually became a comedian and had this uh, he was a drug addict well he's a drug addict because technically you're never not uh, and he had this this journey that was amazing he had come out come out of it and successful comedian and tv personality film star presenter um but actually um along the way he's been involved in sexual misconduct to put it lightly and he is he's fallen out of favor he's got now got this uh, podcast and bit, youtube channel and whatnot that was incredibly successful but he's also then started going off the deep end in really embracing a, a kind of anti-woke culture and being aligned with all sorts of very dubious thinkers and indeed uh, I on one of my videos with Tom pulled apart his uh, views on Ukraine which would completely well actually what you'd expect from that information space that he exists in almost like going down the kind of Andrew Tate um, Elon Musk that kind of world that that kind of fringe world where everyone's feeding each other like David Sachs Russell Brand um, he's then embraced he's gone from like being broadly kind of secular spiritualist to now I see even being confirmed into or converted into Catholicism you can see that cross on his neck and he's at the Republican conference now if you'd seen his comedy from like 10 15 years ago 
absolutely you would never have predicted this and, and anyway that's what Emily Maitlis is talking to this idea that oh perhaps we've got someone who's going to challenge him on sexual misconduct lo loads of women uh, so on and so forth but but no also, and then he said tell us about fatherhood it was unbelievable to see how much latitude and how much encouragement somebody who has been accused of multiple sexual allegations will get in a place like this. I understand that the Met are interviewing 25 separate women in terms of investigations into his alleged sexual abuse. None of that was discussed yesterday. <laughs> when he came off air, I tried to grab his arm. He shot me daggers and fled. Excuse me. Can't imagine why. Yeah. Funny that. He wasn't going to get that weird. sort of question from you. Any luck finding our Liz? It's quite confusing because she posted a picture of herself yesterday wearing a long flowing red dress. And dare I say that everyone at the Republican Party who is female is wearing a lot of red and long flowing For red once in her life, she's fitting in. <laughs> I've accosted everyone I can find and they look horrified when I see when I asked them if they're Liz Truss. <laughs> the news agents. This is a global player. So you get this uh, collection of people at the RNC who are at the fringes. Interesting. I saw um, <laughs> Grinder, which is a gay dating app, had an outage around Milwaukee that I had, because it's uh, supposedly being so uh, massively used at the RNC, which is supposed to be full of these people who are like super conservative Christians, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And yet, Grinder has it can't handle the amount of traffic it's getting due to the RNC. And in fact, I'm just looking over here. I'm not going to show it here, but someone at the RNC on Grinder going across, like, yeah, there you go. Uh, Yahoo News dating app Grinder crashes, anonymous profile spike during RNC in Milwaukee. So there you go. Um, you can make this stuff up. Anyway, so then we've got. Emily Maitlis doing one f on um, on Nigel Farage. Now, what's important to note about Nigel Farage being at the RNC is that he was supposed to be um, supporting Trump on his campaign, and he said, "I am not going to run in the UK as a as an MP because I need to go to uh, I, because I need to help my mate Trump." And then he was convinced to actually run as an MP in Clacton, which was a dead cert for him to win. And so he's like, OK, I uh, will go and be an MP um, in Clacton. But then he promised, look, do you know what? My head is going to be in being an MP. But everyone was like, you're never going to be interested in being an actual MP. Like people holding surgeries, people coming to you saying, can you sort out the potholes? And people coming to him about the issues they have in his constituency, him doing actual MP work when he wants to be hobnobbing off with Trump. Uh, and he's not bothered in actual serious work. I mean, you should have seen what he didn't do as a, on the fisheries um commission or whatever it was in the in the european parliament he was like very poor at actually turning up and when he did he just shouted at people and, and insulted people or whatever but but what's interesting here is that he's he said yeah i'm gonna be full on into being an mp in clacton and then as soon as the rnc uh um convention has has come along he's sodded off uh, and you're like really so any anyway emily mate this is fantastic now she's not with the bbc she's not beholden to um having to veto her thoughts and, and questions she can just speak her mind much more freely now nigel farage what are you doing here it's been a busy day king speech this morning and here well i had to come i mean you know trump i've, I've been friendly with him for all these years and he's just about just survived an assassination attempt so I thought I'd come and say hello. Did he ask you to come? Uh, there were people around him that thought it was the right thing that I came. I thought you were giving all your time to Clacton now as its newest MP. Well I'm allowed to come to America on a trip like this particularly in these circumstances. I mean I, I had planned to come originally to America and to be here for a few months and I made a decision no I'm gonna run for Clacton uh, but given the circumstances it was right that I came. Because at one point you said you wouldn't be running in Clacton because you wanted to give your time to the US, but now you are the new Clacton MP, but are here in the US just, what, two weeks after getting elected? Because yeah. this feels more exciting? No, I'm just here for a couple of days. That's it. That's it. I'll be back at the weekend. And um, no, I mean, look, what happened on Saturday was, could have been uh, the most disastrous event. But why did he need you? 
<laughs> that's Ouch. a matter for you know his team to answer, not me. No, I mean, listen, it, it was right that I came. Right for who? It was the right thing to do. I have friends. I don't, I don't know whether you do or not. Maybe you do. But I have friends, um, and when they're when, when they're in uh, having a tough time, uh, it's right to go and support them. And is that? I, I just love this. Like Emily Maitlis is just not phased. She just goes for the jugular and like holds holds these people to account. Like it was right for me to go. Right for who? The people in Clacton. You know, I've got friends. Yeah, but you t- told me that Trump didn't ask for you to be there. His team said it, it might be good if you if you're there. Like really? Um, and when they're when they're in uh, having a tough time, uh, it's right to go and support them. And is that the sense you've got that he's having a tough time right now? He nearly died. Do you think he's having a tough time right now? He nearly died. And do you think that's changed him? Do you think? I mean, you must have spoken to him if you're well, a good friend. I think that he's obviously very thoughtful. It, it, you must have spoken to him if you're a good friend. Uh, pass it back. Yeah, I haven't. His team asked me to be here. I mean, this is just diamond stuff. About what happened. Um, a dramatic failure of secret. I mean, really dramatic failure of secret service. Who normally are so efficient and so good at what they do. And he's now, of course, like diverting attention to another issue, trying to divert it away, uh, blame the Secret Service here. Are so efficient and so good at what they do. Um, so I'm here to show support for him. Just tell us one thing. Have you seen Liz Truss here? No. Are you looking for her? No. <coughs> Would you like to see her here? I, I would see anybody that's friendly. I'm, I'd be very happy to meet. But I believe she's. I think, I think Boris is here somewhere as well, which is very surprising. But you haven't made contact with either of them. No. And are you expecting to? No, really. I've got lots of American friends. Which I think is quite funny for various reasons. But anyway, so Liz Truss is, is there now. Liz Truss was the um, prime minister for. Was it the shortest or second shortest amount of time? 42 days or whatever it was. Absolutely disastrous. Is now a bit of a laughing stock and she lost her seat in the last election. Now, then Channel 4 did the whole uh, Nigel Farage and Liz Truss. And this is like deeply, deeply uncomfortable. Nigel Farage, have you seen Donald Trump yet? No, I haven't. Are you going to? Yes. When you, when's your audience with him? I don't know yet. But you're here to see him tonight? I am. And Which way we going? Did he ask you to come? <laughs> I'm here. But d- did he ask you? Were you invited? Earth's it got to do with you. Should you not be with your constituents? Well, Earth's it got to do with you. It's only a question. There's, there's an eight-day week. As long as I work seven of them, we're OK. OK. And you're here because you're still a big Trump fan. You think Trump's politics are the way forward? For peace, yes. For peace? What do you mean? I think peace comes through strength, not through weakness. And I think his four years were a good four years in terms of foreign policy. Far better than anything we've seen since with Joe Biden. Thank you. And that looks pretty much, I know you're probably only hearing that out of one ear, but um, that's clearly about, uh, clearly about uh, Ukraine. And that's what his position is, that, that Joe Biden is not good for Ukraine. Trump will give peace. There you go. What, why, why you're here? Have you, have you met President Trump? Are you going to speak to President Trump? Are you? We're Channel 4 News. Have you, have you met President Trump? Are you going to speak to President Trump? Why, why are you here? <laughs> Liz Truss, why are you here? Liz Truss, for me, it's, it's, a, it's a, sim, a, sim, a simple question. Why are you here? Are you coming to actually see President Trump or just to be here to soak it all up? Would you not want to say you're actually here? You bothered to come the whole way. Absolutely brilliant. It's just like so cringe yet yeah, fantastic. Uh, we'll come on to that one in a second. Now, we're going to go back to Emily Maitlis, who does a bit of a masterclass on um, interviewing here with Carrie Lake. So Carrie Lake from Arizona, who has not been the most successful of politicians, has completely jumped into the Trump world here and then gets a very difficult interview from Emily Maitlis again. I, I actually think you need your head examined. Can you answer that? I think you need your head examined. Donald Trump has talked, Ms. Trump's talked about the need for a new tone in politics, a civility in politics, a kind of unity. What does that mean to you? I I actually think the tone has always been good. I I believe that what we're trying to push is a strong economy, 
secure borders. These are policies everybody wants. And so you don't the think the tone I in think, America in politics I think got out of tone, hand? I think the tone is really disturbing when the media is calling a man like Donald Trump Hitler. They're comparing him to Hitler. Like J.D. Vance did, you mean? The, the, like the media is doing. But J.D. Vance was probably, like many so Americans, they listen to the media. And for eight years, the media has been tearing President Trump apart. A good man who everybody loved before he ran. Imagine having a smear campaign going on about you for eight years. Yeah. Pretty soon, everyone wouldn't like you. And, and so I applaud the fact that people like J.D. Vance and others, we've seen them, Amber Rose, she did a speech. People are coming over going, whoa, the media was lying, and I believed it. And it's so irresponsible. And you falsely claimed that Trump won in 2020. You called for the imprisonment of those who accepted Trump's defeat, including your own opponent in Arizona, Katie Hobbs. Why did you do that? Called for the imprisonment of what? Of opponents like Katie Hobbs who accepted Trump's defeat. Why did you falsely claim that Trump won in 2020? Well, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and go through all of the evidence of what happened. Do you believe Joe Biden won 81 million votes? Do you think he's more popular? A guy who can't string two sentences together. You believe he's more popular than Barack Obama? I'm asking you, do you believe that he is the most popular president in the history? You have to have have, you got to have brain cells. In okay, this. so you don't believe that Joe Biden won the election in 2020? I believe the election was run fraudulently. And you refused to concede in 2022 as well, your own contest. Well, you obviously, obviously you're lawsuits. sitting across the pond and you don't understand what's happened. And I'm not going to argue you about it with somebody. for defamation. So she's lost an election herself in Arizona. She's refused to concede rather like Trump. Yeah, because this is how corrupt the system is. I, I pointed out how they worked our elections. You lied about a top Arizona election official. You defamed him. You falsely accused him of injecting 30,000 illegal votes into machines, intentionally misprinting yep. ballots. Yep. Do you it stand happened. by those yes. claims? it happened. Would you like to repeat them on air now? It happened. You no, think I, you know what? that he intentionally misprinted ballots? If he you sued you for this. Yes, I know. I'm in the middle of it right now. It's lawfare. And he and said guess what? that guess you what? had turned his life upside down. He said you'd made him the Listen, target of threats of Emily, violence and Emily, death. I'm in the middle of a lawsuit and I'm not going to talk about it because I don't want to uh, work. When you're in the middle of a lawsuit, you don't want to talk about it. Okay. We talk about it in court. That's where we talk about it. I feel confident that I've spoken the truth. But you know what? You made him the target of violence and death. You saw what happened on the stage on Saturday night. You heard Donald Trump say, let's lower the temperature. Do you accept the part you played in inflaming the political never, rhetoric no. in this country? You are just part of the fake news and you're lying. You don't know a damn thing about Arizona. You don't know one thing about our election. And you sit there with a smirk on your face. You're sitting over in England, in, in, in the UK, in a country that's being destroyed. In a really? country that's being destroyed. I guess I'm just harsh. asking. And I really don't. What it says uh, about you know, the Republican this is the last Party, question. that they this need to the, lie this is the to intimidate, question. to threaten, because you don't believe you can win at the ballot box. Why would you need to do that? You are just a sad case of a human being, and I'm so sorry for you. I'm sorry that you bought into the propaganda. I hope that you'll look in the mirror and see that you've been, you've been following propaganda and you don't understand what's happening. So I'm guessing way. if you don't win in November, you won't concede. That's the rule that you're playing by now, is it? You are, I, I actually think you need your head examined. Can you answer that? I think you need your head examined. <laughs> just, Thank you very much. just absolutely a delightful. Um, and then we have, uh, it's interesting. I believe it. I believe we all witnessed a miracle, literally. From, um, you know, before it happened, the flag above got blown in the wind and it got tied into literally what looked like an angel. Did you see that video? I didn't see it. Oh my gosh, you guys have to find that. It, 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 was, it, was, it was truly, it was like an angel coming down. It was the American flag tied. They had to bring it down and all the people in the stands helped unravel it. And it was literally before he came out on the stage. It seems like God's hand is... So why I it included that because it's not anything particular. I mean, we could poke holes in a theological understanding of angels helping save Trump's life there. But 
This is Breitbart News giving just the soft ballist. Oh, it felt like God's hand was on his shoulder. Just like you, Marjorie Telegreen, are exactly who we love. So we're just going to have this nice sit down and interview where you've got Emily Maitlis just going hammer and tongs at people. Uh, and then you've got here, this is Times Radio. And interestingly, Times Radio are a Murdoch owned uh, well, the Times is a Murdoch-owned newspaper, and Times Radio, therefore, is an extension of that. And yet, here we have Marjorie Taylor Green just going absolutely at Times Radio for being a bit like Carrie Lake, the old classic. If I don't appreciate what you are, sa- what where you're leading this, then I'm just going to call you out for being fake news, fake news, and yeah, it's so cheap. You should report the news, not lie. No, 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 not lie about. It. You don't get to ask any more questions. I'm done with you because you're the cause. You're One the cause thing, of you our the country. Democrats no, no, no. You're the cause of our Steve country Andrew being divided. Now. You're the cause of our country being divided. You're the cause of President Trump almost being assassinated. You're the cause of everything wrong. Well, West- so, yeah, the Times Times Radio being the cause of Biden uh, of of uh, Trump being assassinated or the attempt on his life. Yeah, I, I don't think Times Radio are really that much responsible for uh, assassination attempts of people who weren't politically aligned and who uh, apparently you seem to be wanting to take out either Biden, Trump, anyone. He, he, he had the DNC, uh, I think, uh, dates that he had Googled, et cetera, et cetera, the, the shooter that is. So America. evidence of those claims. No, no, you're done. You're done. Yeah, go okay. back. Thank go you. Back. What do you think of his choice of J.D. Vance? As so this is going back to the beginning. Very excited. I was the first member of Congress to endorse J.D. Vance when he was running for Senate. Um, and I vetted him pretty closely, uh, of course, because I've, I'm one of those strong President Trump supporters. This uh, is a man who compared him to Hitler, though. It's not well, concerning. Let me finish. I vetted him on his statements, uh, his articles he'd written. Um, and of course, you know, J.D.'s an American. He can change his mind. And what changed his mind is he watched President Trump in his first presidency. And it was the policies and the decisions uh, President Trump made in his first four years that changed his mind. And, you know, I, I really respect that. And I think Americans have the right to change their mind, especially based on someone's actions, not their words. And so when people are judging J.D. Vance, I think they can also look to see that we can watch his actions. And as a senator, I'm really proud of him. I'm proud of the legislation that he's voted on. I'm proud of the work that he's done on the committees he serves on. And I'm really excited President Trump picked him. So Vance, he said that the UK could be the first Islamist country with nuclear weapons under the new Labour government. Doesn't that paint a a sour picture for relations with the UK? Well, let's talk about the words of the Democrats and Joe Biden that have also labeled President Trump as a fascist, labeled all of us as not and Hitler, completely lied, demonizing him so much so that a, a young man, a 20-year-old, which is hard to imagine, actually climbed onto a roof and tried to murder President Trump. Wait, you whoa, said whoa, whoa, that the whoa. Democrats no, no, no. wanted the about, shooting Let's talk about people happen. like you. Where's your no. So this it just turns really quickly because actually that question was, I mean, her the question about Vance was good. And actually... Marjorie Taylor Greene gave a pretty decent answer for that, which is he looked at how Trump acted over the four years of presidency, changed his mind. Okay, whether you believe that or not is another thing, but okay, fair enough, good answer. What do you think about Vance and what he said uh, slagging off the UK government just the other day after the UK government was elected and just as he's about to be selected as the vice president? And then she just goes off on one. Let's talk about people like you that demonize people like me, President Trump. You know, I have some of the most highest amount of death threats because of people like you, because you choose to only take certain words from people. And then that's what you want to report. Shame on you. Shame on you. Because you know, no, 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 no. You're You're the problem. And where is this woman from? The Times. You're from the Times. Okay. You're ridiculous, and you're the problem in our country. You lie about people like me. This is the first time you've ever talked to me. I want you to know, I'm, I'm a regular person like you. I'm also a mom. I have First time you've ever talked about me, but you're lying about me. She's literally asked two questions, but you're lying about me, which is her lying about the Times interviewer. Three kids. And we have to put up with the most unreal amount of bullshit because of little liars like you that take your job and turn it into political activism. Your job is the press. You should report the news, not lie about you. You don't get to ask any more questions. I'm done with you. 
because you're the cause. You're One the more cause thing. You of our the country. Democrats no, no, no. You're the cause of our country Steve, being response, divided. Yeah. You're the cause of our country being divided. You're the cause of President Trump almost being assassinated. You're the cause of everything wrong well, where's in your America. Evidence for these claims? No, no. You're done. You're done. Yeah, go okay. back. Thank go you. Back. Absolutely brilliant. Anyway, uh, there you go. That's just a. <laughs> A selection of difficult interviews that you may or may not appreciate you may have seen them all or none of them before but i thought i'd uh, show them to you uh, as a little flavor of the rnc i know uh, a lot of that was skewed to say uk people like liz truss and um and your man farage but uh, yeah Take it for what it is, just a bit of an extra, one for the weekend, as, as they say. Take care, guys. Speak soon. Toodle pips.